We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hello and welcome to L.A. Talk Live. We are Shell and Debbie's Mind, Body, Soul and everything in between. And I'm one of your hosts, Del Lady Jones, and I'm a soul-centered life coach, specializing in relationships, uh, personal growth, and divorce recovery. And next to me is my wonderful co-host. I'm Debbie Carlin Boyle, and I am a certified personal trainer, a certified fitness instructor, and I am a certified wellness and nutritionist. And today... We, we have a great show for you today. And Del and I, we like to have amazing women on our show. And they ha- who have inspirational stories that they can share that shows tenacity, endurance, strength, and courage. And today, we have just that woman with us. She's a formal model who was living the life of her dreams when suddenly everything changed in 1996. This story of survival will empower and inspire you today. So we would like you to welcome the beautiful and amazing Andrea Leonelli to our show today. Thank you. Hi, Andrea. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Well, um, I know your story is fascinating, and it didn't just start in 1997. It started many, many, well, not that many, actually. You're not that old. <laughs> but a few years before that, I know you had a, an interesting childhood and a, certainly a very interesting career in your early, in your teens. So do you want to take us back there and okay. tell us a little bit how you... Okay, let's just let's just do it, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's Absolutely. just go yeah, for it, Andrea. Yeah, well, I want to just <laughs> really thank you both for uh, giving women this platform oh. and uh, allowing it to thank grow. Thank you, thank you, audience. And thank you. Be heard. I mean, thank it you. really, it's. You know, there's a lot of stories out there that need to be told, and whatever platform we, you know, however we can get it out there, we're just happy to do it because um, I think we can help a lot of people. And now we have the beauty of the internet to be mm-hmm. able to do that. And so, your story yeah, is yes. so inspiring on Very. so many levels. I know that when you share your story, it it not just. I mean, so many people with different issues are going to hear it and hear. And get hope from it. Well, even today, I mean, like I I really think today to be able to even say heroin addict Mm -hmm. in public and not to be, (gasps) to say incest survivor, Mm -hmm. you know, to say I'm I'm a widow, to say I'm a cancer survivor. I mean, these are all things that killed us years ago Mm -hmm. and they were and they were taboo years ago. I've been sober a long time, and back when I got sober in 1985, people really didn't talk about this stuff. In mm-hmm. fact, it wasn't even ta- I didn't even talk about being sober in in public. You know, it was really because it would be a, you'd have it would be a stigma. You would you know kind of have yeah. uh, you know people would yeah. view you differently. And yeah. now it's a whole other ball game. Yeah. And I, I think that's been a big part of healing too. I um, had I you know I've done my work. I mean, and I always tell people, you know, you know, find people that you're safe with. Find that find that person that you really feel you identifies with what you're going on with, that you can share your secrets with. And I always did that on a very small level. And um, and then I was speaking at a, at a large meeting, and for some reason I talked about my incest. And at the end of that, I had women coming up to me, hanging on me, crying, thanking me for the courage to break the silence. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, I said, that's what this is about. People don't realize that so much of women's sexual abuse is about keeping secrets. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, I mean, in some way to have gone through what you went through, but then to have, have the validation of when you shared it, you shared your truth. I mean, because as they say, secrets, yes. you know, that's the sick secrets as our makes you secret. sick. Yeah, we're as sick as our yeah. secrets. Yeah. And, and to get yeah. that immediate validation for having touched those women's lives and given them the courage well, to come forward and share their secrets. Yeah, and it was, it was like I realized 
I'm trying to think of a polite way to say it. That's why I had to stop. I realized he had won again. He had got me to keep it a secret mm -hmm. another 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I do, I do challenge women and say, I mean, I'm not saying go out on the streets and blab about it, but, mm -hmm. you know, find that person that you can talk to and start talking about it because that's where the healing does yes, where we share true. but women share and we mm -hmm. heal and I do I even work with men that on different levels on on addiction levels and things like mm -hmm. that I mean you do too mm -hmm. and you know it's so important that yeah. we 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 feel not ashamed when we talk about mistakes yeah. because that's how we learn from them mm -hmm. I mean and I've made a lot of mistakes but, as we all have as we, yeah. but you which know, we should can, I want to go back uh, to the beginning okay <laughs> all right all right I know so our I, audience I, I can go on and on well no but I mean uh, I they're gonna be uh, we know the story, but yes. I um, we have to assume our listeners haven't yeah, read the beautiful okay. article in the Malibu Times. And we, let's go back to the beginnings, your mm -hmm. your beginnings, and how you know life was treating you, and you talked about drug addiction, and yeah. you and well, I'll tell you and, that, like yeah, yeah even before that, yeah, the just incest. How you grew up. And, well, yes, you, you, let's say my, my my mother was materialistic and a rageaholic. Wow. My brother was physically violent with and me. You grew up where? Here? Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, okay. My my father was uh, neglectful, a passed out drunk on the couch, mm -hmm. and my grandfather was sexually abusive. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it's a lot we, of No, no yes, girls, negatives. you got to understand when you're a little kid, you yeah. think that's normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you not it's better. not until you get out into the real world and you start realizing that other families don't behave like this mm -hmm. and then that's when the shame really starts going on yes big time. and the secrets and you're like going oh my god so when I mean and I tell people I go you know when I found heroin it was like oh my god I had a better but I had a great way to keep secrets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I mean I didn't go out thinking Numb oh it. I want to become a heroin addict but you know I got I was pretty and I got sucked into guys that thought it was you know their way of getting me and I tell my daughter I even teach my daughter today I said any guy that has to give you drugs or alcohol to, to take you out or to take you to bed is date rape yeah absolutely absolutely I, I, he, if absolutely. he can't use his personality and make a commitment between two people mm -hmm. and I mean and I go I do I put my foot down you know, so that's smart a, for, I love to, for that. girls I mean, gosh, to understand that. Uh, and boys, big one. You know what? Big boys one. Too. Yeah, yeah, they should, well, they hear, should hear that. No, I have talked to, to, to men even um, that were I could say no, but there's a lot of men that have been sexually abused too. I was yep. just yeah. going to say when you yeah. said earlier about I see, I see that it, in the it's, and that's yeah. I mean that's almost even more shameful for men. It's it's ah. it, it's it's almost yeah. I think Oprah made it sort of when she came out and said that she had been abused when she first you know became a famous figure. There was a certain amount of acceptance of of it's okay to share on a mm -hmm. public stage that something had happened to you, but it's. It's still for men. It's so so difficult, and it's so tragic because yes, little boys are abused. Um, I, I don't know what the statistics are, but it's not that far behind um, little girls. Well, I think I heard a statistic. I mean, this is an old one, so it might even mm. be higher now. But that 80% of the women in recovery programs have been sexually abused. Yeah, yeah. I, and if I, I do, a, you know, sort of an unofficial poll of that in getting to know all of my clients in the rehabs. That would be true. It's very yeah. yeah. So yeah if I just started like balancing yeah, you out kinda, those yeah, you that see. said they were and those that yeah. don't have that yeah. issue, it would and be I mean, and I, and I mean, and if I wasn't on drugs, could would have a lot of that happened? Maybe a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I mean, well, it's definitely the stuff as a kid. I was just a hostage. Yeah, and that's what really Absolutely. that's. And I tell a lot of the girls I work with, I go, "What happens to you as a children? That's You're true. a hostage." Mm -hmm. But how? Being in recovery for 32 years, how I behave with women, with men, my relationship with money, sex, materialism, is my responsibility now as an adult. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say, oh, well, you know, it's because when I was, no, 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 mm -hmm. no, no. Now it's like, who do we want to be? Who are we practicing today? Mm -hmm. How am I showing up in my life? What example am I being for my daughter? For my staff, I mean, when I sold my company, I'm, I'll jump ahead. But when I sold my company, I had 4,200 empl employees. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I built up a big company wow. down in the ports, and this was in South Central Los Angeles. This was in glamorous Santa Monica mm -hmm. or something. I drove down to the to, to the ghetto every single day for 15 wow. years. 
Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. You are such a yeah. Powerhouse. What an inspiration! Yeah. And that's and yeah. So and my first, my, part and of and this my, whole my first story. Con- my first contract I signed. I had a halo drilled into my skull and no teeth, and I yeah. signed my first contract for six million dollars. Wow. wow. Well, we're going to okay, yeah, get, get to that. that. We've got to get to that. We've got to go. People are going, wait, why didn't she I have I, a halo? Well, yes, exactly. Right, we're, right, well, you're going right, to tell, right, tell right, you right, everything. Gonna <laughs> you're going to hear gonna, about it, but yeah. we're going to go back to... You girls have got to keep me on track. We're going to have to go back to do. I've gotten off track a few times in my life. So, you're a teenager. I think you said you were 14 when you were first introduced to heroin. 13, yeah. 13, wow. And how long did that addiction go on for? 13 years. 13 years. So, it's a long time. And it was just heroin? Or was there other? Oh yeah, of course. Yes, but mostly heroin. Okay. I mean, that was the one. That was my. Dr- we always say drug of choice. Yes. And there was a few brief periods that I didn't, but you know, um, and but so, I always found my way back. And, and so <laughs> your modeling years did that overlap the heroin addiction? Oh, yeah. It oh, did. Yeah. So, so you were a functioning heroin. Yeah, that's what I was then. just going mean, to say. You had to be showing up. And well, like I said, I, d- I did. I did heroin to keep secrets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, and um, and it's it helped. A, oh, we just it, you don't feel nothing. But hide everything. No, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a horrible drug. It just lies to you, and and mm-hmm. it tells you, oh, you don't have to feel anything. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have to feel anything, you can don't really have to deal with it. You, then. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to deal with anything. Mm-hmm. And you know, getting sober then was really having to deal with it all. Mm-hmm. You know, um, which is the way you heal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a lot of work and a lot of courage to go that way, yeah. you know, so you have to give yourself a yeah. lot of credit. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I also will say, I mean, because people do ask me about the modeling days and the Studio 54 days and all that group. How did stuff. you get discovered as a model? How did that start? Um, you know, I, I tell people um, it finds you. You know, I, I mean, there's so many. Someone see your beauty yeah. and offer you yeah, somebody, to come take pictures. Exactly. Or, I mean, yeah. it was, it was a, I mean, somebody wanted to, uh, gave me a, sh- sh- gave me a, sh- it was like back in the Bowie days and someone gave yeah. me a short haircut and I did a hair show and I hit the runway and it was just like off the charts and they sent the pictures to the agency and I was booked for the big, you know, Ann Klein ads and Calvin Klein ads. All of, and you were with and, one of the top agencies, Wilhelmina? I was with Wilhelmina for 10 years, mm-hmm. 12 years. Gone. Did you know Susan Nathy over there? She was an agent was my roommate's mother and one of my still really <laughs> close friends. Just to, just an aside, aside there. but I'm just wondering if she was your agent. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, did you know Faith Cats? I mean, yeah. no. <laughs> that's yeah. where we can go down this lane. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that after <laughs> yes, the show. I know. Sorry, I was just I think you and I think you and I are going to talk year. about we could yeah, talk about the who's here. Yeah, exactly. there are other models that she that I'm still friends with yeah. that she ah. represented. Anyway, we will, yeah, but, but so I but you got discovered that way. Okay. Yeah, so you got discovered. Yeah, you were telling Fun. us that it was um that, that this is another issue that i mean because we all know that there's a lot of drugs in the modeling world mm-hmm. yes. but when you said that when you came out and you you wrote to Wilhelmina and said that you were or the agency and said you were in in rehab yeah. that it, it was difficult for them to accept no, they, that they, no they 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 um asked me to leave yeah but but, but this knowing, was 1985 but there was a lot of drugs back then too in the modeling. Eighty five was it was it was a sinking time. This mm-hmm. was when, you know, the the cocaine people were realizing yeah. that they were ruining their businesses up their nose Absolutely. and marriages were falling apart mm-hmm. and people were dying in car accidents mm-hmm. and big time. and having heart business. attacks. Yeah. I was I came yeah. here in the early eighties yeah. and was in the entertainment business yeah. and Me too. I witnessed so yeah. so much yeah. of that demise. So I had to buy the coke for my clients. <laughs> It was part of what we had to write in with our petty cash. We had to falsify receipts yeah. so we could keep our clients. You know, that was part of the perks yeah. is that they would get their drugs. Yeah. And I had oh, the to, rock and roll uh, business. Know, producer, the I had to hide it. Too. Absolutely. No, yeah. Rock and roll even worse. But yeah. yeah television so, commercials. So, so you were saying, so it was 85 and, um, and they, they let you go. How well, did, you you how know, did, but I'm, I, in hindsight, I'm, I always wanted to use my brain. Mm-hmm. And um, because even when I was on location, I'd read books, you know, I mean, I I was in Africa and Israel and that's where I got one of my cancers, the HDLB1, which is a um, very rare tropical lymphoma, leukemia. And and the other one that I got was malt lymphoma, which is from the hep C also. So, I mean, 
you know, and it's amazing how they, what they know where these things are coming from mm -hmm. today. I mean, and, and what's causing more and more things. Yeah. But to stay, I know I always get ahead. You girls <laughs> no. are going, God, yeah. there so, you go. So yeah, no, we just again. want to go chronologically that, that, because your story is so okay. fascinating exactly. and, and, and one bump in the road after the other. And then but the also just, miraculous but I went back, overcoming I went, I went back to I went back to school. I was going to say, because yeah. you, you're I went, very I went, well educated. Yeah, yes. I, went, I went to school and got... Um, didn't complete degree um, in psychology, just about, but I mean, then got my um, certificate in alcoholism counseling, even got a certificate in second degree Reiki. You know, I mean, we were just... Oh, and you also were an art and a uh, finance major? And then uh, my master's in um, fine arts theater. Oh, and, arts and, um, and, and that was an amazing working with the same group of people for two years you get really close and it's not like I ever really wanted to be an actress but you know we also also go where it was such a privileged program you know we're like you know 30,000 people apply and only you know 500 get in the first year and the second year only 250 are invited back and I got invited back through but what I, program was it, it it's um it, it was he he ran Rutgers it's um oh, okay. William Esper everybody okay. anybody in the fine arts knows Bill mm -hmm. Esper's program mm -hmm. and um you know, after all the years, I will tell you, as, a, as, an, as learning to use your body as an instrument mm -hmm. and learning what you do in acting, because as a heroin addict, I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. So here I was b trying Polar to write opposite. these skits, these scripts, and I'm like, you know, this isn't what I want to do. I don't like to share my feelings. And it really started to make me share my feelings. And I remember even in Abnormal Psych, this would be a great exercise for somebody that's just stuck in their head or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. to say, go take an acting class. Yeah. Go bounce impulses back and forth with somebody. Yeah. You know, just, you know, it just. Gets you right out and it yeah. makes you so comfortable. You I put the um, focus on someone else. taught acting for yeah, quite a while. There you go. I, um, I have a degree as well mm. in, in theater. And um, I taught acting, but it wasn't just actors that came to my class. I had lawyers. Yeah. I had judges. I had uh, people that had to speak in the insurance industry. I had um, uh, finance people. People, anytime people who had problems getting up in front of a group or had or who were, had problems expressing themselves would come take my classes because they'd hear from other people how well that it opened them up to become much more. Uh, aware of their bodies and themselves and get yeah. out of their fear factor of being in front of yeah. others and looking silly. That's the hardest part yeah. that people it's have to get over. Exactly. Everybody's all so embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all walks of life came. I, so I, I, I think did it's you great. do this after you, uh, when you when you were when let go by the agency, yeah. is this the, where you well, no, went, I went after I, Yeah, that? I went to college mm -hmm. and then um, I auditioned for the program uh, with a girlfriend. She wanted to go. I didn't really want to go. I just went along. And then I'm the one who got in. <laughs> As it normally happens. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and, um, and, and I stuck with it. And I mean, and I got really close to a lot of the girls. You know, we really, you know, like we'd all get our periods at the same time. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know you're, you're getting close, close when yeah. you're cycling yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> true. And that's not on a spin bike. <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, you know, that's just, this is the stuff that you go, gosh, you know, we really to be able to share things. I, I look back on my, my, my life and I, I'm, I I see over and over again, like now, I know you guys keep going, stay there. And I'm, but now, I mean, in our 50s, I mean, look at how well we get along. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love being in my 50s. Yes. I mean, I have lunches I and projects and, yeah. and, and, and we do things and we're like, we really want to share. We've and evolved. I, yeah, We've and evolved. I feel like we really want to help the kids and we want to say, hey, you know what? I've made so many mistakes. In fact, you know, the gal, Claire, that wrote the article, she said, oh, do you want your daughter to see all this? And I said, you know, Claire, this, the, these mistakes, my biggest mistakes have been my, my biggest learning opportunities for my daughter. Absolutely. And I, I mean, to be able to share for women today to say, I instead of, you know, don't do that, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I mean, and say, you know, 
I, this is what happened to me when I did it. Yeah. yeah. And oh, just they be respect humble. us. Yeah. They learn from us. Absolutely. Our mistakes are there. Well, yeah. being you know, vulnerable and being ways open to learn. and sharing yourself, I think, is the most. It's it's it, yeah. it's so much better than, as you say, just being the sort of lecturer or the telling. Yeah. But you know, sharing your experience. Yeah. We don't with, realize how strong our vulnerability is when it's yes. truth. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, and, the and that's truth. part of acting too. Yeah. That's all. I always told my students: just be authentic. Yeah. Find the truth. If you don't find the truth within a character, then everybody will know it because everybody can see right through yeah. that. And that's true about ev evolution, it, you know, for yeah. your soul. Well, I wanted I to ask okay. you, so were you sober when you started taking acting? Because I always know no, that, no, no, you no, see, no. because they always say that, you know, you, your, your development basically gets arrested at whatever yeah. age you start using. Yeah. So yeah. I'm curious how you could access emotions of say say you started using at 13, 14. Um, you know, the, if you were playing a, a, a you know a 20 year old or something and 20 year old emotions and if you've been shut down for all those years, how did you access those emotions when you were in these in this acting class? Oh, it was raw. Yeah, raw. It was it was off the charts. Wow. That's, you know, I mean, it was like unplugging the bottle. Mm. <laughs> but you said you yeah. felt safe with those people. We did. I'm friends with a few of them today, too, mm -hmm. you know. So, I, I mean, and y we go through, I mean, such an extensive program anyways. But, I mean, to really learn to use yourself. I mean, so I definitely would um, say that to people that are having an issue. You know, you look up an acting class, you know, I mean, and really, uh, you, it takes you, a lot of courage, though, especially when you know you've got a lot, a lot of stuff bottled up inside you to, to, to expose yourself like exactly. that and become so vulnerable, yeah. too. But that's, yeah, that's but you what have I was to practice. saying earlier. Mm -hmm. It's practice, yeah. you know, and Allowing I mean, and, and the fact that we're not practicing that in our, in our culture today, yeah. practicing being authentic and practicing being honest with each other. I mean, people go, I go, I have a lot of girls I mentor and stuff still. And I, and I mean, and I make, and I tell them, you know, I screwed up today. Oh, I, I did this today. I mean, I don't ever try to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want people to think no that such thing. every day, <laughs> oh my God, it's Andrea Leonelli. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> I don't think you want to be me. Yeah. No, I mean, people have got to learn to trust you. And it's the honesty is what builds the trust. That's and if right. they see that you being honest about stuff that you're going through, they're going to be more willing to share what the, the, the I, I don't like to use the word mistakes, but the um, veering off course, <laughs> I like to say. So maybe yeah. they, they weren't doing exactly what they intended to do, but they're more more willing to share that with you if you're sharing your vulnerabilities and your you know mistakes that you've yeah. made so yeah. I also want to get back yeah. to um, because there was a massive massive part of your life that that obviously was yeah. huge but prior to that you you were married now well when, yeah let's get that straight. yes let's, yeah, let's yeah. get so to you in? meeting your like, husband let's and, not let's not make that a bed of roses girls yeah we okay can, I, I had more restraining orders on my husband than probably every everybody in my in Malibu put wow. together and you were doing drugs with no. your husband no, no. at the time you no. were sober no, no. I got sober a long time ago okay we're, we're in sobriety okay now we're at uh, college acting okay yeah. husband so when do, well, how okay. what year or how old were you when you met your husband I think I was like 30 Oh, actually, before we go there, I, I, I want to know what got you sober. Yeah. That's a huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. huge. Oh, we we skipped that yeah, over. that's a big one. <gasps> this is so funny. <laughs> I remember I was with a group of I don't know, rock guys a, 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 a couple of months ago, and, the, and they were all going around the room talking about how they got sober. And guys, right? And they're like, oh, you know, and all this raunchy shit. And, <laughs> and I go, and they come to me, and they're looking at me, and I go, I got sober for a guy. I thought... I met the right guy finally, and I was going to get sober and have babies. And but he actually um, called me about a couple of days ago, and his wife hung him, hung herself, oh, and no. he can't, and he still can't get sober 32 oh, years later. Oh, oh my, my goodness! God. So for me oh. to say oh. I was so sad and so heartbroken that my friends would not let me go near him. And I see what a mess he is today. And I'm going to try yeah. to help him get it. And we're Cliffside's one of the places. Oh, good. So okay. I mean, I'm trying to help him. So that's the difference with us today. Instead of going, God, oh, what a what a jerk! Look at how effed up his life is. I can go, 
okay, all right, we're not going to get married no. today. Um, let's 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 put your life first and yeah. let's get some good pillars in your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, financially, he's a mess, emotionally a mess, mm-hmm. the grieving's a mess. That's all got to you know, be um, in yeah. balance, yeah. And, and, so I, and I mean... And, was and, he sober when you met? This is the, the man that you met, that you became... Hit bottom, we call it. Hit bottom yeah. with... But let me just in New I, York. <laughs> so, but he was he sober when you yeah. met him? But yeah. you got sober first because you wanted him to get sober and you wanted to be with him? No, I got my sober story is I got sober for a guy. He was not so, but he did not get sober. He didn't get sober. He ah, did not make but it. You oh, did. But yeah. you did. But you did. So he continued. <sighs> yeah. So how long did 30? that last with the two of you with him being zero? Wow. I was not allowed to go near him. Wow, because okay. your friend yeah. stepped in and protected yeah. you. That's and I, wonderful. Yeah. And I look what happened to his wife, and I yeah. go, that could yes. have been me. Mm-hmm. It could have been you. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing. You stayed sober. Yes. You know, I've had some really tough women that have kicked my ass. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you needed it and at I'm, the time. I'm they come back to you and when I'm going, you need them. How come I never got the nice women? Oh. You know, yeah. I'm thinking back. Because you I'm needed going, an ass kicking. That's got, why. You, you don't even know me kick. yet. <laughs> no, I know you're still At least, at least have dinner and with me. Yeah. 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 Let me give you a couple it? reasons to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a beautiful woman inside and out. No, and they knew it, and they knew you had a story to share right. and to help other people, and right. they were going to do whatever well, it took to no, get right here. It, we, tough love. <laughs> uh, the, the number one character defect of um, addicts, alcoholics, um, we're not allowed to say the, the N-word, so we use self-centered, but there's a lot of narcissists. Yes. Mm. You know, we go around blaming everyone mm. for all our problems. <laughs> I see that, too. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> understands me. Yeah, I get a lot of that. <gasps> and if, uh, if only they did it my way. <laughs> I, sh- I, sh- I shouldn't be doing those imitations. That's very no, condescending. No, but I, I hear that. I, but you lot, know, maybe somebody you know? will resonate with that, yeah. and they'll go. Mm-hmm. They have, you have to turn uh, around and look at yourself. And but you know, the, the 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 issue is is, and you deal with that recovery is, you can't lead a horse to water. No, mm-hmm. absolutely. And um, I worked with a Park Avenue therapist for years. I mean, I'm sure I gave him a lot of money. And when the time came and there was nothing left for him to do, he said, "You got to go to rehab." Mm-hmm. And I was like. Jesse, Jesse Rosenthal, great guy. I don't know. I, I can so were you? This, so you were still in Manhattan yeah. um, using while you were in therapy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and your therapist knew it. Yeah. And that's why. He, well, not he, exactly. I, mean, I wasn't, you know, but I mean, he was giving me other stuff. Yeah. yeah. It gets a little messy. <laughs> so, okay. Don't try to figure it out. You're, I know you're, yes. you're going to go. Feeding the addiction. You know, is, is there a way to is get that? an enabler? No. It's just, I mean, there's, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I know many people that, but I, that when you are taking pills or alcohol or whatever I mean no therapist is going to say I can't treat you until you're you're clean no I mean we we need help we need mm-hmm. help at every he, stage he of our was, life and and it's very important that we're gentle with yes, people absolutely because the harder we try to get them to stop drinking yeah. or taking drugs the, the more they go the other absolutely. way absolutely and, and it's such an oxymoron you know for mm-hmm. for to tell normal people don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Just go about your life. Go do what you need to do. Do a few things, you know. Yep. But, you know, don't, you know, just, you know, and hopefully when the time comes, yeah, plant some seeds. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and when the time comes, then you do your homework, know where to call, know where to go. Mm-hmm. And when it bottom falls out, and that's what happened to me when the bottom fell out, Jesse said, you got to go to Silver Hills. Because, I mean, the thing is, is a lot of addicts are already carrying so much shame. The last mm. thing in the world you can do is is be judge, judgmental yeah. and shaming. It's Of course, they're never going to give up their crutch if, if they're going to feel that, that that's what's waiting for them. And, and the recovery is so much about healing that shame, shame. Yeah. Exactly. sharing it, talking right. about it, mm. and finding out that Letting we can make better safe. choices. Yeah. They yeah. have to feel safe. Well, that's our music to yes. go to break. We will be coming back in a couple of minutes and I am going to make you stay on. <laughs> stay. tell us about go. how you met your husband 
and the, the, you said it wasn't a bed of roses. And but we wanted, we wanted. I want to get to that part that was such a crucial part of your life. Yeah. Um, because we'll we've got there. so much more yeah, to discuss so here. So um, please join us with the Dell and Debbie's mind, uh, mind, body, soul, and everything in between show. And we'll we look be forward back to seeing in you back in two, two minutes. minutes. Right. Stay with us. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Marsha Waiteka, inviting you to join me every Monday at 1 p.m. for Born to Talk, where conversation plus connections equal community. Be sure to tune in to Born to Talk. With Marsha Waiteka, Mondays at 1 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also listen live at iTunes Radio R&B, TuneIn Radio, Radio Flag, Live 365, or AHA Radio. This is Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. We are LA Talk Live, and we are born to talk. Hi everybody, welcome back to Dell and Debbie's uh, Mind, Body and Soul and everything in between. We have a beautiful, lovely, wonderful woman with an inspirational story that we're telling today. This is Andrea Leonelli. We are so excited to have you and tell your story and, and let people, in what you have to say, I think people can find themselves in, you know, some part of themselves that they let, they they hid behind and they couldn't let out. And what you've done has been really miraculous. So we, we'd love to get back in here well, after um, you found your... Well, you went to rehab. You went to rehab and you, and you, you came out got and sober and... Went to college, went to acting school, moved out to L.A., Met my husband on a blind date. Oh, it was a blind date. Yes, okay. I, I was, uh, and uh, the, the the story always was he fell. He, he said he fell head head over heels with me, and I said, well, I was living in a loft. I think he fell over my bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, and, but anyway, I ended up um, we we ended up um, just being a couple right away. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just it just clicked, and. Um, but he was also getting out of a divorce, um, and things were good for a while, and I think we did move in too quickly. And uh, in fact, my manager from Sony now tells me one thing. He says, do not move in for the first year. Mm -hmm. And he's he's a um, interventionist kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm now, he, he's retired. And... Um, and I, and I really think you need you need to have your, your rule of thumb is two years. Two actually. years now. Mm -hmm. Oh, now well, it's up to two years. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's I mean, no hard fast rules, but, I mean, but the idea that, is you need to, to get you, to know each you, other. Yeah, you need yeah. to go and make sure you have your own life, yeah. and everybody's got. It. But, but especially we, we with an addictive personality, it ten, there has there tends to be that sort of I want what I want when I want it. No, there's a. It was more of a possessive personality on his part, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, you know, I used to think it was flattering to be the it girl. Well, not if it is obsessed with you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Absolutely. and he was very uh, almost over obsessed with me. I mean, what I could wear out of the house. I uh, mean, it, yeah, that was very controlling. He and was, yeah, he really. I was his it. He, I was his thing. I was, you know, I he. You were yeah. an object, not well, a human. Well, possession yeah. would even be a little better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, and it didn't. There was a couple of times it didn't go well, and um. And, and but those I will I, I mean there is there is a silver lining um, those were also wake up calls for us to get into therapy and I was I was probably about five six years sober at the time and um, and then um, and once it happened when when I actually actually we moved up to San Francisco and I had an alley and another time it happened and you know and I did I got restraining orders all that stuff but you know the truth is is it, it was a wake up call for us. So not everything has, you know, you, you can take lemons and turn it into lemonade, as they say. I mean, and it really was. We got into group, you know, we got into couples counseling, and I remember sat there berating him, 
about, oh, what, look what he did and all this. And then after a couple of weeks, the counselor turned to me and said, well, Andrea, when are we going to deal with your issues? Yeah. Where's your responsibility? <laughs> and I this? was like, mom? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is. It's, it's like, yeah, we keep growing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you know, when I when I told you the four the four characteristics of my family, you know, I, so learning communication, oh my God. If somebody asks me what's the most important thing in a relationship, you know how guys will tell you sex. I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I will tell you if you if you can't talk to that person, no, you don't have. You, there's you, no sex. you don't have a full. There's no room. Se- yeah, there's no se- <laughs> it will end very quickly. Yeah. You know, and even when I was in business, my staff sometimes they would they would undo I, my my term was you'd undo my deals, and I would get mad. Mm. Yeah, and um, and, and you know, and I would I'd also apologize for if I raised my voice, but I said you know, but but also, but I, what you did was was still doesn't make what you did right. Yeah. But you know what? And I said, and I realized too that as long as I was talking to them, and engaging with them, they were still. In my life, mm-hmm. whereas somebody, if there was a if there was a, a staff member I wanted to get rid of, I didn't talk to him. Just so I don't. I don't. It's easier about, to disengage. Yeah. If there's no relationship. Yeah. If you're talking, yeah. there's a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And listening. Mm-hmm. Ah. Absolutely. Oh, we You home. know, I had to learn that one. That you know, fifty yeah. percent of it's listening. Thing for anybody. Yeah. Absolutely. Very tough. We all want to hear what we want to hear, and then we yeah. tune out to the rest. Yeah, and so listening true. skills are very difficult. That's something you have to teach yourself. So, yeah. my daughter and I practice that. You know, we do. We 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 practice that. You know, when we when she was a teenager, we, you know, got a life coach and stuff, and that was one of the main things they taught us to do. They, well, they, great. they taught me to be quiet. Well, it's great because <laughs> mother and daughter <laughs> relationships. Yeah are the most difficult relation. I have two daughters. Oh. So the others are the most difficult and it's hard because your kids they're going to treat you worse than they treat anybody else because they know they can because you're still going to love them unconditionally. Yeah. And yet you know that they don't you want them to hear what you're saying and it's just it's great that you did that with your daughter well, because I still struggle for, with my kids that are much older now. For you know? mothers the hardest thing for me was to let her grow up, Absolutely. let go. I th- they say after there about six, my therapist used to tell me, after about 16, they know your values, they know your opinion, they know your view of the world and how you see it. And really, after about 16, if you don't allow them to, to grow into who they are, mm. you sort of just become a repetitive, nagging parent. You really mm. almost need to sort of... I mean, I have two sons that I mm. adore, but mm. I, I consciously took that on. At about 16, I realized I, I really needed to be the container, the safe container, but allow them to to show me who they were becoming. Yes. And, yeah. to, and, to, and to just, you know, even if I... I mean, there are times things happen right now, and I would love to say, well, I think this, but no, it's nagging. Who no, no, nagged? actually, actually, my daughter... He knows what I done in business, and she'll call me and ask me about a lot of stuff now. Yeah, the masking but, is wonderful. Yeah, but it's the, the it, unsolicited it, it, advice. Yeah, that can no, be. That, yes, but I, I mean, I remember when when she told me, she says, Andrea, when you ask your daughter a question, pause. No, no, no. She says, no, no, no. Count to ten. All right. She says, no, no, no. Count to ten slowly. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It's like stop and take a breath and really because that will lower your heart rate. So if you count to 10, you're lowering your heart rate and it also keeps you from from uh, being spontaneous or uh, but look impulsive. At our, but you you know? see how we talk back and forth, all Absolutely. three of us at the same time and we go. And we but go. I'm going to get controlling but here now. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put you back. We want your story. We got to get to... <laughs> We got to get to your halo. <laughs> it's just so. And everything after I'm talking the halo. About children. Okay. This yeah. is, okay. Okay. You, sorry, sorry, when sorry. I was reading uh, your story and what you went through, and you're going to share what you went through when your daughter was just two years old, and that mother mothering love that you that okay. you're talking about now, how okay. how that was so pivotal okay. at that time of your life. Yes. So okay. this is yeah. potent, um, very potent. So um, we moved back to LA in um, August 1st of 1996 and um, on Thanksgiving Day um, my stepson was living with us he wanted to go see his aunt in Las Vegas for Thanksgiving 
So being the family that we are, we all piled into my big, I don't know if I should say the name of the car or not, but, um, I, and, um, was it an SUV? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, um, drove off to Las Vegas. Well, um, and your stepson was, was driving. driving. My stepson and was how old driving. was he? 16. Mm -hmm. And, um, Rick was in the back with Allie and Allie would not go to sleep. You know, you know, she was daddy, daddy was her toy. So in the while Garrett's driving, we switched seats. The pa I was in the past front passenger seat, switched seats, and I, you know, because Allie, I, you know, would sleep with me more than anybody else. And um, as the car is driving out, I mean, and I kind of fell, fell asleep, and I, I hear, I felt this big sway, the car sway, and just my instinct, just, I just sat up, and I asked Garrett, I said, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Everything okay?" And he says, yeah, 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 I'm fine. And as I saw out of the corner of my eye, my daughter was coming around. She had gotten up because um, she had been laying down. And, and, I, and I just, my instinct was just to sequester her, just to grab her. Mm -hmm. And um, as I did that, I turned around, and that's the, the last thing I know. Mm -hmm. And I went out, the car flipped and flipped. And um, I went out of the car. I don't, you know, I have with my, my hands first. That's oh, why yeah, I yeah. Oof. Wow. Gosh. So I have all these wonderful scars, and I have scars in my... So you were thrown from the car? So I was thrown out of the car. No, were you wearing seatbelt? No, we were no. sleeping in the yes, back. Yes, you were sleeping. And mm -hmm. Allie was in a bush. Wow. And uh, I remember the helicopter, not the helicopter, the, the sirens going, and, and I came to, and I said, where's my daughter? Because I don't know, you know, a mother's instinct. I just mm -hmm. thought, Rick's going to take care of Garrett, and I'm going to take care of Allie. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I had a broken neck and a broken pelvis and a dislocated hip and a broken arms in and, and seven places and, and six compound fractures in my back. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a blown out knee. And I stood up. And my teeth were knocked out. And I stood up to go find my daughter. Wow. And I did, and I can remember, I can still remember seeing the sirens going around and around and them going, ma'am, ma'am, you need to lay down. And I said, not without my daughter, yeah. you know, and, and so I mean, beautiful. and they did, they brought, you know, they brought her over to me and then they put me in, the heli they got a helicopter and they put me in the helicopter and I was in so much pain. And, and I said to them, I said, I need another shot and I never asked for pain medication. And mm -hmm. they said, we only have one. So if your ambulances only carry one, one, one syringe. And I remember just looking over at my daughter and her looking at me with blood just dripping down me and no teeth. And, you know, and I tell people, I said, I just kept saying the serenity prayer. Mm -hmm. And that got you through it. That I passed you, out you in passed pain. Out. And I don't, and I, I and still. Allie, and Allie was okay. Or she had a little cut. A little yeah, cut. Okay. But, yeah. She doesn't remember anything. Yeah, you know, and and I mean, we just. Now, did you know at that stage what had happened to the other? Um, no. You didn't no. know anything. Okay. No, I just assumed Rick was taking care of Garrett, mm -hmm. and then three days later, when I woke up, from a coma. Coma. Yeah, I heard some nurses over me saying, "She doesn't know yet. Mm. She doesn't know her <gasps> husband's dead." No, 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 no. Because oh, yeah. before the accident, my husband had pushed me really hard. <clears throat> I used to push her anyways, with no offense, but um, it's a bad joke. Um, <laughs> 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 he got different he got kind it. of pushers, <laughs> and um, he physically pushed it. But he was—he well, always—he was like, "You can." His mantra to me was always, "You can do this business. You don't need me to do it." He made me start the staffing company. He made me run it. He made me do all the deals. He made me, made me, made me. And I mean, and he was a big executive at an insurance company, so he helped me with a lot. So I'd always go, "Well, can you look at this deal for me?" You know. So I learned. I picked his brain. And um, and I always tell you, ask questions, mm -hmm. ask questions. You know, stick with the winners. And um, he did. He was really good at that. And um, and he would tell me things like he would say, if anything happens to me, and I'd say, don't talk like that, don't talk like that. And he'd say, no, no, no. If anything happens to me, promise me one thing. You want to know the one thing he 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 asked right. me to promise him? Don't give men your money. Mm -hmm. This is coming from a, from man, a man that yeah. adored yeah. me. Yeah. And I will tell you, there, and I'm going to tell you, there are two kinds of men I've met. Men that find it dishonorable to take your money and want to be a man, and the other guys that, that 
are waiting for you to pull out your wallet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and and I see the difference in them. And it's so, it's because of that, it's so obvious. You know, and I'm like, and some people are okay with that. You know, I'm not saying that I don't want to make a judgment, but I'm just yeah. saying it's it's interesting to see the different characters yeah. of, of men that do that. So that's amazing that it's almost like there was a premonition or something that yeah. he wanted you to be independent. No, I knew exactly what to do for two years. Yeah. And you did it while, I mean, to talk about how long the recovery was. Well, I had two casts on my arm. My, my brother had to hold the phone for me and, and, and I did. I just, I really reassured clients that I could do this. And that's going back to the earlier statement of the halo. Yeah. You were on the phone doing deals when you had... Yeah, I don't Describe know. what a halo is. Yeah. It's it's a cage that's that's metal that's drilled into your skull in the front and the back, and um, it stabilizes your spine. No, your neck, your C two. Okay. And um, you know, it's it's one of those things that every morning before you open your eyes, you 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 hope it was just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. And when you open your eyes and you see it, the horror comes back. Yeah. Oh, How long did you have to wear that for? Four months. Mm. Wow. And then the only reason they took it off was because it was starting to bleed. It was starting to push through my skull. Yeah. And they were right. afraid that if it did, my brain could get infected. Oof. Of course. Wow. So, I mean, so the, the this is one of the many su- survival situations you, you, yeah. you survived, rather, the situations you survived. And, yeah. And, th- and not just survived, but thrived. I mean, mm-hmm. you were telling us earlier about, I mean, you built this business from nothing and you created a if you want to share with our viewers what you I mean our listeners and viewers what you were able to create um well I mean I I got into I was it was a staffing company and I actually started out in die casting talk about glamorous right Mm -hmm. um but I worked in a die cast facility for eight years I'm going from being a model to um die casting and um and I, I mean, and I really got to really like a lot of the people down there, the salt of the earth, good people, hardworking people, honest people, most of them. Uh, there's always one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's perfect. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and I mean, and it was really so much about humanity for me, too. Mm-hmm. And um, my clients, um, I remember I was doing some uh, some coaching with my daughter, and, and and somebody said to me, they said, "What's the most important thing about business?" And you know, I didn't know business. I've been an actress, so what what is what's the, one of the first things Meisner technique teaches you? Put your focus on someone else. Mm-hmm. So it was great for business. There's a business tip for everybody, <laughs> but uh, and you know, it really is. You want to build relationships with other people, make the other person more important. Mm-hmm. And um, and some of the principles that I learned from recovery uh, were, you know, keep your word. Yeah. I, I mean, show up on time. I, w- I, w- I actually got here three minutes before the time, but I made, <laughs> I made up time. I really <laughs> raced. And, um, but, you know, it's things like that that build our self-esteem, too. Keep mm-hmm. your word. That's it's really, right. really important in business. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and, and big, big executives really, really remember that. And I never lie to a client. And I would tell my staff that you can be with a client for 10 years. You lie to them once, they never forget it. Uh, and you, and <clears throat> I mean, I, I think, who was it? The, um, I think I was watching um, that uh, uh, celebrity rehab, and it was the drummer once, was a drummer of some band that was saying, I never lie because if you tell a lie, you've got to remember and you've yeah. got to always cover get, your that's tracks. Why you get if you're always truthful, it's that you have peace of mind. That's you never true, have to worry. That's a good one. That's good it's too. It's so yeah. good. You just, I mean, really, it's just like just stay, stay honest, stay truthful. It's a lot less exhausting than covering your tracks. Well, there's a lot of things I don't say <laughs> in business too. Mm-hmm. You know, I well, mean, well, not saying I'm, and lying yeah. are two different I mean, things. I, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of discretion mm-hmm. that you know. I mean, I. Tell people what they need to know too. It's yeah. on a ne- as needs to know basis sure. too. I mean, now I yeah. I know we're, I don't want to run out of yeah. time here because we've got a few other um, things that we need. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, happened. yeah okay. because so, I would have thought that that so, would have been enough. That yeah, that would have been tragedy enough. It. But then okay, so I you built a, a I built I, I built a company up to twelve million dollars, and sold it in '08, and um, was successful in selling it and sold it to some guys on New York and in, in, on Wall Street back in New York. And um, um, and I started to notice that my skin was 
bleeding and peeling. I'd like wake up in the morning and I mean my skin was just peeling off. And I started to go to doctors and nobody could figure out what was wrong and thought it was an allergy and da da da. You know, finally this one little acupuncturist said, why don't you do a poop test and like that, whatever. And it came back heavy metals off the charts. Mm -hmm. And um, they sent me to Mexico actually for that one. Um, and because I, I first heard, I heard about they, your, the, 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 the natural path. Now, okay. Because the FDA will not allow strong enough treatment. Mm. They, I would have never been able to recover in this country from that level of mercury poisoning I had. Wow. And I did. I was, I studied anorexia for about 40 years, maybe a little longer, but who's counting? <laughs> and and I, I mean, and today, so much of my recovery from, from, well then, actually, well I'll stick with the, the and what then, the mercury poison. Do you know where you got that from? Was well, I lived on um, sashimi. You know, mm -hmm. it's really great diet for anorexics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I mean, and I think I ate an apple and some almonds. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it was too much raw fish, basically. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and I mean, and it's really. Tuna is a big fish, you know. I yeah. mean, I do eat sushi sometimes a little bit, but mostly like salmon, the smaller fish. I yes. mean, I mean, you know, but uh, I won't say never will I eat, not eat tuna anymore, but be careful. Maybe once or twice a month max. Yeah, yeah. and see yeah. what the source is, where it's coming from. Well, it's just a big fish. Be too so many the, little fish. Yeah. So, the, so that, the rash so, you had to the bleeding, that was purely the heavy metals no. or was it something more? No. Was so, it? thank you. So, <laughs> She's good. She's good. Yeah. Keep her yeah. alive. So, so okay. So that got cleared up, and that got back down, and and that was really a lot to do. Because I then I ended up doing two more years of chelation back here in the states with um, a doctor here on the west side, and wasn't getting better. So then I don't know about you girls, but when I hit fifty, it was like, you know you know, uh, an announcement, what do they call that, you know, when everybody knows. It's like everybody kept calling me going, did you do your colonoscopy yet? <laughs> oh, right. I'm yeah. Like, Heck. Yeah. I, you know. You have to. Yeah. As soon as you turn 50, <laughs> watch it out there. As soon as you turn 50, I'll say, did you do your colonoscopy? <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> so I go in to do my colonoscopy and I, told, I said, you know, and I got this, this heartburn. You know, and I've been taking Pepsi Complete and Nexium and, you know, just, you know. What Things to aggravate it and make it worse, <laughs> actually. Thank you for that. Yeah. Just can't thank you enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so? she did She did the endoscopy and it had, I had ulcers, a lot of ulcers. Mm. And they biopsied them and it was malt lymphoma, which is directly related to hepatitis C. Wow. And I had the Geno 1. Um, so they treated that and um, I did that treatment in... I think it was 2012, I finished it, and I lost half my hair, and I lost um, a bit of weight. Um, for me, when I start losing weight, because even again, well, we'll get to that. I started even that. though you were anorexic, you, yeah. you had issues around losing weight? Yeah, I lose weight. If I don't eat, I just lose. I still, I'm because of how compromised my immune system mm, is. Yeah. I mean, if I don't eat, I lose weight, and I get weak. And, you know... Um, and they couldn't figure out what it was, why I didn't get better after six months of that hell with interferon and Revivan. So um, somebody told me about a, a guy. I don't know if I'm supposed to, if I can say doctors' names. Yes, or, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So anyway, so I'd been working with Dr. Gruen here, and and but then I, we couldn't figure out what was wrong. So, and in UCLA, and um, and then I found this integrated medicine doctor, Dr. Sajiji, and um, um, Habab, and he. Listen to me. I mean, I mean, the only way you get to him is you email him your case, you know. And um, and he did. He had me come in, and he listened to me, and he ran some. He and he, I talked about all my travel to Africa, Israel, Europe. I mean, I traveled a lot. I I was doing the collections in 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 Europe, and I mean, I would travel so much. I'd have to pick up the phone to see what how they answered the phone to remember what country I was in. <laughs> Well, because I thought, you know, duty free was was meant you get to buy alcohol. <laughs> no, I remember those you're days. looking at me yeah. like I'm wrong. I'm like, heck, you know, I mean, that's why they put it there. That bottle of Stoli goes in the big model yeah. bag and, yeah. you know, goes to the room. And unfortunately, most of the time when I woke up in the morning, the Stoli, bo the Stoli bottle was empty. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, but I, I needed it, girls. Yeah. But I mean, so that was, 
So after all this traveling, he ran the test and it came back HCLV1, which is really not in this country. Mm -hmm. um, and so the only way they know how to treat bloodborns, because I, I have lymphoma, leukemia, hep C, they're mm -hmm. all bloodborns. And the, the, it also slows my blood down, so my blood coagulates. So uh -huh. I decided to go to, you know, go to Germany, and uh, they put a pick line, a 43-inch pick line to my heart, because mm -hmm. uh, I had to have so many IVs. Uh, they were doing 11 IVs a day, and they did an antiviral from my blood, for my blood. There's one lab in the world that's in Greece that does it. Very expensive. The blood work's expensive. The antiviral's expensive. Um, and um, but they can do things mm -hmm. out there. And yes. they, and you research to go to Germany, or well, Dr. as opposed Gru to somewhere else. Um, well, Dr. Gruen works with with Ursula. Okay, You're Ursula Jacobs, which in yeah. Germany. Yeah, in Germany. Okay. But there, I mean, I have I have a friend that that is dealing with yeah. that too, and and uh, goes to Europe for treatment. And the treatment there, the the drugs that they use, if he did those drugs here, it would be, I can't even tell you. I mean. Thousands times more expensive. No, they're, they're they're expensive there too. The problem is is that the FDA will not approve them here mm -hmm. because yeah, of then, the drug companies. Well, well, did you see Dallas Buyers Club? A lot yes. of people yes. think that's about gay, but yeah. it's about yeah. the FDA mm -hmm. closing down all the drugs from coming, Absolutely. all the natural mm -hmm. occurring drugs. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if natural occurring drugs cannot be patented, yes. Yeah, we can get into business. I love that. That's yeah, a whole nother yeah. hour. Yeah. But um, you know, since a natural occurring substance can't be patented, drug companies can't make, make money. money. On. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else in the world, Mexico, Asia, Europe, all understand how important our immune system is. Mm -hmm. And so many of our cancer drugs affect, damage, kill the immune system. Yes, totally. that's right. And we have got to stop killing the host. Yeah. I'm the host. You're the uh, the human host body. If it's not he if it's healthy, that's why I I still have cancer. Yeah. You know, there's no cure for what I have. I want to keep it knocked down. I'm probably going to go to Germany next month to do some more antiviral stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because I want to make sure it doesn't get back out of. Yeah. You know, back but up. But you there. were you mentioned earlier that you mm -hmm. um. I mean, you were basically told. Tell, tell us what you, the doctor yeah. told you oh, that yeah. you well, had to drive home, being given basically three years. Yeah, and I, yeah, three, that, years. Be, yeah three, four years ago. Yeah, four years ago they gave me three years to live. Wow. And um, that's why I decided to go to Germany. I mean, it is, it is ghastly expensive, but you know, you you have to try. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I mean, and I took my daughter, and I took the guy I was living with at the time, and my daughter took a friend, and we kind of made a nice thing of it, yeah. you know, and did things, and you know, because on weekends, I mean, she, I mean, my doctor took me and my my boyfriend to Bon Jovi concert the first week, <laughs> yeah. with the pick line in. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I had one of those ones. Did yeah. you have a little bag where you have to yeah. like carry the? Yeah. The well, I just tied it around me. <laughs> but you know, you know, but that's what I mean. But you talk about fun. Remember, I remember yeah. before, and I said. You made it fun. You have to still do things, things. Don't just sit there and say, well, I'm going to wait till I get better. You know, no. do things. Yeah. Well, that's part of getting better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in moderation. Is creating yeah. joy and happiness in yeah. your life. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's part. We, we, we um, you know, talk about that on our show mm -hmm. when we talk about the mind-body connection is so important because, you, you know, if you, you with, we have hormones within ourselves that we can trigger our happy hormones, you know, our mm. endorphins mm. and uh, those kinds of things get triggered through pleasure. Mm -hmm. There are pleasure hormone and pleasure hormones can heal. Absolutely. They heal us. Love those are our laughter. natural drugs. Yeah. Those are the, those are the, um, that's what you need to recover from so many debilitating illnesses I mean whether they're psychological or physical it's it's laughter and love is yeah. just um, how long amazing. were you in treatment in Germany I still am you still am so you go back and forth how often um, I haven't they've sent they sent some stuff over oh, okay. uh, September October no I, I did September October November December of this year and um, it was some experimental stuff from Czechoslovakia and um, but I'm going to try it one of the things I learned recently is that cancer cells don't know to die. Mm. And so this treatment was to try to wake the cancer cell up to go to start it through its life cycle. And um, and I think, you know, it might have worked out a little bit. You know, um, I'm feeling it took a couple months, but I'm feeling better. And then I work with I, I'm doing some biofeedback right now with mm. um, Dr. West's office. And 
that's almost like kind of like uh, a peeling away the onion. Mm -hmm. And um, and they found that they said, have you been taking antibiotics? And I had forgotten that I had these girly issues and I was, you know, bleeding like a sieve at our age, you know, and you're like, God, they just couldn't get the hormones regulated. And they were, so and I was they gave me antibiotics and I'm thinking, Kills you know, we everything. forget kills your immune system. Yeah, we forget how many times we take antibiotics, it's and it, well, no, according to the machine, it blocks. It causes blocking because, mm -hmm. and they want to get it flowing yeah. again. And all the microbes. I mean, it kills off mm -hmm. everything in you. Mm -hmm. everything the, um, really bad. Like acidophilus, mm -hmm. you need microbes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, We can talk. That's part of my wellness business. Ah. Yeah, is working with people to understand the nutrients and the things that we put that we eat that we put in our body can really become healers and understanding how that process works yeah. oh my goodness our show yeah, is are. running down yeah. Yeah. but we'll yeah. talk about that separately uh, yeah um but i just um i know that uh i mean that this the the um immune it's called immunotherapy yeah now that doesn't you can't get that done here you have to go to germany for that is that correct you can get a few things done here i mean there are naturopaths that do high uh, high iv doses of vitamin c mm -hmm. glutathione mm -hmm. ozone so there are a lot of good things that help with antivirals boosting the immune system that we all should be learning more yeah. about because that's right. the one thing i was going to say what what would you leave for our listeners i know you mentioned something about do your research don't just yeah. accept the diagnosis and the chemo and the radiation for well, what a doctor but I'm, tells I'm, you. But I'm also going to tell you, I really believe, I, I just had someone call me, and I'm very honored that people call me when they're dying and have cancer. And I always am like, you've got to get healthy. Yeah. You've got to get healthy. So if take they, responsibility. Yes, and I mean, and as much as I'm mean all about the glutathione and the vitamin C, most people, you've got to start eating whole food. I said two words, yeah. whole food. Start My eating business. whole yes. food. And it's organic Can't in there too? Enough. It yes, should be organic. Or, 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 organic I, I, the absolutely. source of the whole yeah, food. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's a yeah. whole show in within itself, yeah. in the yeah. source well, and the soils and where they come yeah. from and what we're putting in our bodies. But you know, you know? that over inundates people. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. Just, 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 start. just the three words. Whole, 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 organic whole, whole food. food. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's, that's true. Uh, is there anything else you want to leave our listeners with? Because uh, the time is God. up. We can I, hear I our just, music. I, I, I really hope that everybody out there, I really want to just send everybody health and peace. And I, I, if, I just wish you all all so much love in your life beautiful well, we have to thank you yes. because you are an inspiration it's an amazing story yes. your endurance and tenacity more women that's empowerment and we are all about that so yes. thank you very thank very you very 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 much very, for very coming, much for, coming story, and for your time and telling wonderful. your story um, we will be back next week at 2 p.m. Dell and Debbie's Mind, Body, and Soul. Join us then. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, yes. and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio, and crafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned.